How do you know if you're not quite ready to buy a house? So let me tell you, lenders look at assets, um, we look at stability of income, and we look at credit. Let's first talk about your assets. Do you have enough money for down payment and closing costs? So even if you get a loan, there are some programs out there that will allow a zero down payment, okay? Um, those programs typically come with quite a bit of guidelines. Um, but let's say, for example, you, you could potentially qualify for one of those. You're still going to have closing costs. So we're going to want to make sure you have money for closing. And then usually a little bit more than that, okay? Because we want to make sure that you have money in reserves because that signifies stability. So if you think stability throughout the entire process, like what's going to look stable, what's going to look not stable with your assets, okay? So we're going to need some money there. We need money for down payment, closing costs, and prepaids. Prepaids are taxes and insurance, okay? Um, closing costs are things like a processing fee or an appraisal fee or title fees, attorney's fees, stuff like that. Those things are regular closing costs, okay? So another thing with assets are, are you overdrawn on your bank accounts a lot? So take into account, now we're not talking about if you have overdraft protection, because some people use that as a form of um, managing their finances. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about um, overdraft fees. Okay, so if you're consistently getting overdraft fees from overdrafting your account, that is going to be a really big red flag. So if we're seeing that, that's very difficult to explain unless you have overdraft protection, okay? So those overdraft fees are really difficult to explain. You're going to want to clean those up, you know, for a few months before you present those bank account uh, statements to us, okay? Because as soon as we see, you know, 10, 20, 30 overdrafts, um, it's a huge red flag. Okay, so that's that. Um, credit. So let's talk about that. If you have had um, quite a bit of, you know, late pays on your statement, and I'm talking, you know, not the occasional. Once in a while, somebody's like, oh my gosh, you know, I changed addresses. I completely forgot I have a, you know, a 31-day late pay or whatever. We're not talking about the occasional. We're talking about on a regular basis, are you having um, late payments on your debts? Um, in addition, what about forbearance? So forbearance means that if you spoke to, you know, your mortgage company or you spoke to your, you know, your car company and you put your loan in forbearance, meaning you're not making your monthly payments. So it shows that you, you haven't made any monthly payments or anything like that. If we're seeing that, the first thing we're thinking of is, well, if they can't make their current mortgage payment, how are they going to make a new house, you know, mortgage payments on a new house? So you want to get those um, payments in forbearance up to date. You know, that's the, there are other things that we can talk about, but basically get those payments up to date and pay those. You, you owe those back anyways, either way. So you need to get those up to date to show that you are capable of um, making your regular monthly payments. Okay. So now we've talked about assets. We've talked about credit. Let's talk about stability of income. So if you've had more than a few jobs over the last two years, you know, if you, you know, if, if you, if you can show that you jump from job to job to job to job because of more income, uh, better quality of life, um, better hours, like let's say you went from midnight shift and you, you switched to a, you went to second shift then you went to first shift and you went to a couple of different companies because you just weren't sure where you wanted to be. If we can't explain why you've hopped around, maybe it's just, maybe you've, right now you're just unstable. You know, you're not sure what you want to do and you're trying out several different positions and there's really no rhyme or reason because of it. 
you're going to want to wait until you're stable at a job. And, and really, 12 months is a really good indicator that you've been stable. Now, with that in mind, we don't want to see big gaps in between employment. You know, it's different if, if you've had a week off here or a week off there, but we don't want 30 days of a gap or six months of a gap. You need to have, you know, two solid years of continuous employment, generally speaking, in order to, um, you know, be able to proceed with a mortgage. And if you have any large gaps in there or if you've hopped around like many, many times without any true reason, those are going to be red flags. So if you think of stability, those don't look like stability. Okay. So, you know, get your assets stable, stabilize your credit and stabilize your source of income. Okay. And then you're ready for a mortgage. Okay. That's generally speaking. Of course, there's, you know, once in a while, you can bend those rules a little bit depending on other factors, but that's a case-by-case -case basis. But generally speaking, that's what we're looking at, okay? If you have questions, you know where to find me, Trish at CIBM Mortgage.